but it coincides with John Heyman coming out and saying that they are actively pursuing trade packages for Luis Robert. And that would be enough to break me huh. if I was a White Sox fan. Dude, Luis Robert, he's so good at baseball. Yeah. And he's, tw he's 26 years old, and he isn't a free agent until 2026. Like, there's a team option for 26 and 27. Like, if you're telling your fans that you need to trade Luis Robert because you will not be good again before 2026... I don't know what the point of the whole operation is. I appreciate you taking this position because I feel like normally you would be the sort of like dispassionate, yes, tear it all down to build it back up and the draft picks matter and you get your capital from, from the farm system. Like I feel like that would normally be your position on something of this ilk. So I, I, I feel I, I, I feel warm and fuzzy hearing you make this pro Luis Robert case because I, he's amazing. He's, am he's amazing. And I just... They're going to get the tenth pick in the draft because of the because of the MLB rules where you can't mm. pick inside the top five or whatever it is two two years in a row. So like you're gonna you're having this historically incompetent season with no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You don't mm. get the number one pick, and you don't have a great farm system. So you're gonna just trade apparently Garrett Crochet and Luis Robert for a bunch of lottery tickets. Mm. We've seen this happen before with them trading Chris Sale and Adam Eaton and, you know, all of those things. And mm -hmm. you'll get good prospects for Luis Robert. You'll make your farm system better. But there's... Then you'll pay them all while they're in the minors. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll it, get yeah. to the majors and they'll plateau. It's just history repeating itself. And I just... Man, Luis Robert is not some, like, over-the-hill veteran. Right. And he also... He hasn't done as a White Sox. Like, last year he was awesome, right? Mm -hmm. 38 homers, 857 OPS, wins a silver slugger, goes to an all-star game. That's a great season. And when healthy, certainly had stretches of gold glove caliber center field play as well. Yes, absolutely. But, like, does anybody think that last year is going to be the best season of Luis Roberts' career? He has not peaked. He has not peaked, right. and that is a great season. Yeah. He played in 145 games. He hit 38 bombs. He slugged 540. Mm -hmm. That's a great baseball season. Yeah. Not his peak. He will have a better season than that. So if you trade him this year, you're going to watch a guy finish top five MVP somewhere else, win a World Series MVP, <laughs> go on a run of all-star games. Like, I just I don't know what the bottom is for White Sox fans. Tanny, because I can't ask Shane. Because <laughs> he's not a White Sox fan. I don't, yeah, because he's not a White Sox fan. I don't know if he is or he isn't today. It's very tough to tell. What's rock bottom, Tanny? Um, it would it would be that. You know, the trading Luis Robert, I think, would be a total disaster. And I think a lot of fans would be turned off at that because I, maybe I'm just biased. I have a specific attachment to Luis Robert because he is, from the day that the, the rumor leaked out that they were looking to sign him as an international free agent from Cuba. Immediately, we all sort of bought in. And it was along the same time frame as, like, when the rest of the rebuild was going on. But this was going to be your best player on your good teams, right? So, you know, and over the years, he's really developed. And there's been ups and downs, certainly. But if he stays in a White Sox uniform, he could be the best all-around player the franchise has ever had. And I say that without... I, like, I'm not trying to do a talk radio. No, I, I, that's not but, your game. That's and my I, game. And Frank Thomas is, like, my favorite player ever. But I'm talking about all the tools, mm -hmm. right? Every single tool that, that your scout wants, he has it, and he's still young enough to do it for a long time. Now, maybe you move him to a corner outfield spot in a couple years, but he is still going out there in center field and, and going after and getting after it. He's getting it still uh, when he's healthy. That's the big thing. But I just... It's at some point you have to stop kicking the can down the road, in my opinion. And because you can always sell to your fan base, oh, yeah, we got a great haul. And there's a certain segment of fans who will look at those prospects like, oh, yeah, this checks out. These guys are all ranked highly in these other people's systems or whatever. And then you just kind of forget about the great players that you've dealt. Now, granted, some of these players, 
that were part of the, the last core have not worked out. And sometimes they, they cut bait at the right time. But when I look at Luis Robert, I don't see that. I see a guy that, that could be one of your best players ever. And to get rid of him still while he's so young, like you just have to be able to stop this at some point and say, you know, we're going to build around something instead of kicking the can down the road and saying, oh, well, we'll build around a group three or four years from now. Like, that's just not good. Yeah, the problem is you've lost like two seasons here, which makes this really difficult to talk about. And I could see why they're having these conversations because you've lost two seasons here with no real direction. So, yeah, yeah I, I would not be in favor those of are, but, the, but the people that get excited about prospects are a few podcast hosts that talk in echo chambers on Twitter. That's it. Your, your average fan, or even your above average, more dedicated fan, doesn't care. Give me the players that can win me baseball games right now. Spend money on established players who can win me baseball games right now. If it's going to be a prospect, I want to know that, that that prospect can be up in the next season. I don't want a 19-year-old kid who's going to have Tommy John twice who hasn't had it yet. I don't want a 21-year-old left-handed bat that plays right field that has the potential to hit 40 homers. I don't want the next Dustin Pedroia picked at number four, Nick Madrigal, and look where he is now. If the White Sox trade Luis Robert, and this is not a talk show bit either, even though I do do that. <laughs> if the White Sox trade Luis Robert, it is the worst transaction in the history of the franchise. The worst man. I would I would rather give him three hundred million right now, even knowing his health history, than trade him. I get it, man. He's a superstar. He's a superstar. It. I think that that is just a really interesting thing because what you got you guys are making the case. I would argue correctly and passionately. To you, to your point, the dispassionate thing is well, you're not close to winning. They're not about to win with Luis Robert. Anytime over the next couple of seasons. Yeah, and I get that. And I think a normal organization would get the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> but I just, but given everything that's happened the past calendar year with them, I just can't trust that they're going to get the right return. And I, and I don't see their their vision right now. I know they have good pitching in Double A. Speaks noticed it, and Stoney noticed it as well. Yes. But like as far as the position players are still kind of lacking. And now we know that Double A players come up a little faster these days. You know, for a lot of reasons. So maybe you can have your you know great pitching staff assembled, but you still got to have guys out there playing the field. And I don't think they have those guys quite yet uh, in in the farm system. So you need guys up here, man, if you want to compete. So it's just, it's kind of an amazing moment. It's the worst single season stretch in the history of the franchise coming off of what is now a second loss season coming off of the unlikability and the controversy around Tony La Russa and that window slamming shut. And the worst seemingly is yet to come when you trade Luis Robert in a couple of months. There are... There are other, I guess I'll call them assets, at least young players who, who the White Sox did sign young and who still have multiple years remaining on their contracts who wouldn't bring back the type of haul that Luis Robert would, especially because Luis Robert has so much time remaining on his deal. But you get something back for Yoan Moncada once he gets healthy. You get something back for Michael Kopech with that kind of, you know, arm talent with the stuff he Crochet, to the table. Fetty. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. It, this is not about like keep the core together. Like mm. that, that's not what it is at all. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's that guy specifically when healthy can be a top ten player in baseball, mm. and he's 26, and you've got him under control for three more seasons. And so, if you're saying to your fans that three years is outside of the time frame of when it's realistic that we could put a contender together, it's like, man, that is just that's going to be that's historic that's Juan Soto right that's the only comp for trading a player of that caliber with that much I feel like control Oakland had to trade somebody who was really good because they didn't want to pay him, but right? I'm saying with that much control oh I got you like, yeah. with that much, like, a player that good with mm. that much team control being traded mm. and that's just a tough one man that's yeah. a that, that's a tough thing for a fan base to swallow the state of 